Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Quick take of the broadcast here this evening, friends. And uh, as we're seeing all over the news in the United States right now, Fox News covering this, Michael Flynn has pled guilty to one count of lying to the FBI and, of course, in exchange for his full cooperation in their investigation uh, with collusion with Russia. Now, this was supposedly right after President Trump's inauguration. And, you know, what, what's troubling to me is, one, to see, first off, that uh, he got kind of got thrown under the bus, that is, uh, General Michael Flynn did, uh, retired General Michael Flynn got thrown under the bus by uh, President Trump's administration when it seemed like the heat was getting heavy. And at the same time, you know, I felt like that if he talked to the Russians when President Trump was being inaugurated, where is the harm in this? Isn't that kind of what you're supposed to do even before you're elected, that you're trying to reach out to other countries to try to resolve issues that are already existing, trying to build a good relationship, trying to uh, slow down this buildup of military forces all across Russia's western border inside of Eastern Europe there. Isn't this what we're supposed to be doing? Or was this really just something that upset the, uh, you know, the direction that the deep state was planning on taking the nation to start with? And I think that has a lot more to do with it and may very well be why Michael Flynn is now willing to uh, come forward and, and, and uh, in essence, say that, well, I'm guilty. I lied. Oh, it's troubling to me. It also lets me know President Trump's days in office are numbered. And if his days are in office are numbered as a result of Michael Flynn's cooperation with the FBI and in this investigation of this, uh, you know, involvement in the election, uh, well, you know, naturally, it, it, you know, was Russia involved in the election? Well, certainly, if they're going to do interviews, I've seen the interviews they do. I see RT News and Sputnik News, all the, the very news organizations that are considered to be propaganda. And yes, they were more in favor of Trump over Hillary Clinton, although they did try to maintain, maintain some uh, non-bias attitude. But, you know, what's the difference between that and the United States and their involvement in other elections around the world, namely in Israel's election when they were trying to stop Prime Minister Netanyahu from getting elected. And we're very open about it, even sending a delegation to Israel to try to topple his bid for re-election. Or was it for the other way around? Maybe it was for saving Prime Minister Netanyahu's election. I don't know which way it was, but the point is, Israel is one of the most recent cases in history where we can say without a doubt that the U.S. has been very involved in that electoral process, as well as we can see with Venezuela right now. So if Russia would rather see President Trump become the next president over Hillary Clinton, because Hillary Clinton is already talking about having a war with Russia, then don't you think that that's a good thing, not a bad thing? At least that's the way I would look at it. Well, the thing is, it's been pretty obvious, though, that President Trump has been kept very much under uh, his leash as well, because every time he tries to do something to bring about some sort of peace with Russia or some sort of agreement on the Middle East, he immediately, the very next day, if not the same day, is already backtracking a bit and uh, apologizing and, oh, that's not what I really meant. I meant this or I meant that. Now, the thing is, friends, I think we're headed to a war. And we may be headed toward to a war with not only with North Korea, who clearly uh, North Korea is a threat to the United States with its nuclear weapons. And of course, now uh, Kim Jong Un is saying that he is willing to do talks so long as he is looked upon as a nuclear power. And uh, and well, you know, it's not so much that you have to say that he's that, that he needs to be looked upon. I guess he's trying to gain his, as we would say, his respect as a nuclear power. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think being a nuclear power is a respect to begin with. Uh, he clearly does defy the U.S. He definitely does launch missiles. Russia claims that it is a provocation. Uh, 
I would have to say that even South Korean president who joins in military drills with the U.S. Uh, seems to probably think the same thing because more and more we're seeing that the South Korean government doesn't want that type of confrontation with North Korea. But at this point here, as rapidly as North Korea is growing in its nuclear arsenal, the U.S. is taking this more as a direct threat to the national security of the United States, and this is one reason why the U.S. is being more aggressive towards North Korea. But in the latest words from Foreign Minister Lavrov, it is clear that Russia, as we stated in our, our last broadcast, is definitely getting ready to take on the U.S. in an all-out war if North Korea is struck. Here's what the title of RT's latest article says, and I'm thinking that this has a lot to do too, and, I, and I, it's kind of weird I say this, but I think with Michael Flynn, what happened there is letting Russia know that Trump's days in office are numbered. And I know, guys, you may not see this very well, because I can see it as I'm looking at the monitor that I'm looking at. The, 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 the quality is, is just not that good on the cell phone. So let me, I'm going to try to blow it up a little bit bigger so perhaps we can see these words here a little bit better on the screen there. Uh, bloodthirsty tirade, uh, Russian foreign minister decries U.S. threats to destroy North Korea. Okay, now Foreign Minister Lavrov, he went a little bit bigger in his words in this article here. says, U.S. military action against North Korea would be a big mistake, Sergei Lavrov, Russian foreign minister, warned, adding that Washington is itself provoking Pyongyang to make new reckless moves by drills with South Korea and aggressive rhetoric. All right, if someone really wants to use force, as the U.S. representatives to the U.N. put it, destroy North Korea, then I think it's playing with fire and a huge mistake, Lavrov said during a visit to Rome on Friday. Now, I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see this, where I know you can see this, because I want you to be able to see it. I'll, I'll also share a link in there for you as well. That's where uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov is saying. That clearly seems to indicate what I shared with you guys yesterday, that Russia is intending possibly to get involved in a war if North Korea is brought into any type of conflict with the U.S. there. So it's the troubling for me. And I say that, friends, you know, I mean, some people say, oh, just Russian news, you're Russian, you're Russian propaganda. Let me tell you something. I don't get no support from Russia whatsoever in what I say. What I look at is I look at things from a Christian perspective, from a, from a Jewish believer in Yeshua, from prophecy, etc. These are the ways that I look at things. And I also look at things when I say as a Christian perspective, you know, what's the right thing to do? You know, if, if we had the ability to be president of the United States or uh, leader in Congress or the Senate, how would we look at this and how would we handle this as a believer in Yeshua? You know, as Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And of course, that applies on both sides, both Russia and the United States, both North Korea and the United States. But we have to remember, North Korea is a communistic nation. They are not uh, people that are believing in Yeshua as Messiah. But in the case of Russia, Russia is, is an Eastern Orthodox Christian belief. Now, I can't say that I agree with the, the, the way that Russian Orthodox uh, believes, but I don't believe with the Roman Catholic Church either, as far as that matter goes. But the principle, the fact that they all believe that Yeshua or Jesus of Nazareth is indeed the Messiah, this we do hold in common. And so therefore, I appreciate that. So we should be looking at one another as saying, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and Russia seemingly has been trying to find ways to make peace with the United States. Regardless of all the allegations that are going out there, they're trying to make peace with the U.S. At the same time, though, there are so many outside of President Trump. I mean, he really has tried to seem to, to reach out a, a, a hand to, to uh, pre, uh, President uh, Putin there. But it, there's, there's no seeming to make peace. And we can't say that, oh, Russia is going to take and take out Israel. Russia has not made any mention about trying to destroy Israel or anything like that. I ran some of their friends that they have. Yes, I do realize that we've had those issues there. But when it comes to Russia's involvement there, they've also tried to be uh, at peace with Israel because you got to remember, two million of the Israeli citizens are all Russian. They're Jewish Jews from Russia. All right. 
It's one reason why we know we have tribes of Israel inside of the Russian territory. Another reason why, as Christians, as part of the house of Israel, we should remember that many of your Russian people are actually descendants of the house of Israel and even the house of Judah. So we've got to think about these things. And this is one thing that kind of troubles me, friends, that we, so many times we're not looking at. So anyway, we love you guys. We are on the road. We're back in Europe now. Tomorrow we'll be in Prague. Do pray for us. We thank you. We love you. And thank you for your kindness uh, that you have shown towards this ministry. Uh, we thank you for everything. God bless you and shalom.